viewers, Helchat translates to hell hole. But you'll probably recognize the Everest. It's based on the Ford Ranger Bucky. You may call it a pickup. It has the same 3.2 liter turbo diesel engine, but it is packed with the latest in 4x4 technological trickery. It has been designed to handle whatever Helchat might throw at it. The problem is, I don't feel like I have. This is just a giant playground for adults with money. <laughs> One of the new features in this latest Ford Everest that Ford is very proud about is terrain response. Now they've designed the dial here using a Land Rover Discovery and a piece of tracing paper. But basically if you're about to run over some sand, you turn it into sand mode confirms your sand mode over there and then because I'm about to go down a big hill I will activate hill descent control. It tells me that it's active and now it's basically ready and waiting to kick into action. Here we go. Can't actually see down this hill that's how steep it is. I'm just seeing bonnets and I think we're on three wheels right now. <laughs> now the idea is that with hill descent control you shouldn't have to brake or brake at all which is currently what I'm doing. Not pressing a single pedal. And we're very calmly down that hill which I'd battle to walk up. This is so much fun. I think that's the appeal of cars like these. I think that's why people buy cars like these. I don't understand it too much myself but there is a certain amount of freedom. If you want to just leave the tarmac, so much confidence in your car's ability to do so. And I suppose that's it's worth the money. But this new Ford Everest, there's only two models in the range. And the XLT, the bottom of the range, starts at about 590,000. The limited edition that I'm in is close to 650. And that's, that's a lot of money for a Bucky-based SUV. The obstacle I'm about to tackle has divots so deep that if you tried to drive a Ford Fiesta over that, you would just never see it again. Uh, so I'm going to choose the most extreme mode that Ford recommends, four low, rock mode on, and they say this helps the car deal with the most extreme off-road situations. Now the car has some clever new systems. It's got an active transfer case and it's got an intelligent system called Torque On Demand which works out which tires have traction and it sends all the power there. So there's a slight pause and it finds the grip. Oh, there you go. And we're away. That was ridiculously easy. So Everest is very, very tall, but it doesn't actually feel like it's gonna fall over. I don't know how they've done that. The new Everest has a ground clearance of 225 mils, which is five mils more than the current Toyota Fortuna. Also has a wading depth of 800 millimeters, which is pretty impressive, and I don't think this pond will bother it much. all the mud being splattered onto the top of the wheel hub. <laughs> One of the reasons these Bucky-based SUVs are so popular is because they make great family vehicles. They're basically huge station wagons on stilts. And so the Everest retains its seven-seater functionality, except things have moved on quite a lot. The third row of seats is powered. That's very lazy, isn't it? That's cool. 
Your kids will love that. Third row passengers get their own aircon vent and their own drink holder as well. And when we move to the second row of seats, we find that they fold completely flat and that opens up all your load space. They're very easy to use too. Once they're in position, pull this handle once, folds down flat. The rear passengers get their own aircon as well and there's a full 230 volt plug, but it's British, so you're going to need an adapter for that, but that's pretty useful. And then onto the area where you will spend most of your time, the driver's seat. And this is very advanced. Semi-digital, semi-analog instrument binnacle showing everything from your trip computer to your 4x4 information to your entertainment and your sat-nav. And then the piece de resistance, Ford Sync 2. It's a big leap over Sync 1 and they say it will listen to 10,000 voice commands and understand them. It's also much easier to use, controlling everything from your phone to the heated seats. It's definitely the most luxurious interior in the segment and it's going to be very interesting to see what its competitors do next. Now that my confidence levels have been boosted by the capabilities of this new Ford Everest, I'm going to tackle the biggest obstacle on this side of the Melk Boss Park. Uh, right, it's a big hill. This side of it is not that scary. The other side of it is terrifying. It's very steep. It's got huge divots which are going to swallow this car's huge 20 inch tires. The car's going to go off balance. I think this is a bigger test of me than the car. There we go. Nice and easy. Literally cannot see where I'm going. Just seeing sky. I think I'm gonna have to go full Ace Ventura on this. Get the correct line. That looks about right. Oh, that's steep. Can't see where the car's going. Gotta trust the hill descent control. Whoa! <laughs> on three wheels. I'm not using a pedal. That's impressive. That's a big divot. Wow, the car handled that brilliantly. The whole left side of the car just dived into one of those divots. Didn't panic, didn't brake. It's one of the things you have to try very hard not to do is panic brake. <laughs> that was cool. Well done, forward. That's the really impressive thing about this Ford, is that you're doing all of this in almost complete luxury. It's not a bucky at all. The heated seats, for goodness sake. Car journalists love to talk about wars in segments. The bucky-based SUV war. The thing is, in this country, it's not a war, it's a massacre. The Toyota Fortuna dominates this segment, outselling the Chevrolet Trailblazer, the old Everest, the Mitsubishi Pajero Sport, and the Nissan Pathfinder by an enormous factor. And so everyone wants to know what's this new Ford Everest like compared to the Fortuna, and I just don't think that's fair right now. There's a new Fortuna coming very soon, early next year. There's a new generation of all those cars coming very soon. Right now, this is the better car, but 650,000 Rand, it's 100,000 Rand more than the top of the range diesel Fortuna. It's going to get very interesting. So I suppose this is one of those to be continued moments.